Hey there, Nate Urandi, Orion Training Systems. Been a while, apologies for the absence. Was on a family vacation for a while, so hitting the beach uh, took precedence over pontificating here on YouTube. Uh, but also, I just wasn't motivated about uh, any topic in particular. You know, it's, it's, it's interesting how some topics lend themselves to a video while others tend to lend themselves to a blog post. So if you're not uh, following me on OrionTrainingSystems.com, uh, you might want to go there. Uh, I have a, at least a weekly blog post there um, that does not overlap with what I might do here on the YouTube channel. So check it out. In any case, just a couple of topics today. First of all, the tour, equal parts boring, uh, unpredictable, and hypocritical. Um, boring in that it's a very drab course this year, real snore fest. Shorter uh, stages, which is great in terms of faster racing, but at the same time, very few uh, stages that are going to create separation among the various challengers. Um, so uh, what I am finding is that you've got some sprinters and some GC contenders that are left wanting. For example, uh, Contador and Quintana. Um, Quintana, for obvious reasons, he raced the Giro, but... They're both uh, a pedal stroke or two behind where you might hope they would be. On the sprinter side, you've got Greipel, who, um, you know, hopefully wins a stage. I really like the guy. Um, but at the same time, Kittle is just uh, mopping the, the proverbial uh, floor with the rest of the sprinters. It's, it's kind of uh, interesting to watch. Um, you know, there's been tons of crashes. Holy cow. The, the dreams of many are already wrecked, um, whether it's GC contenders or sprinters. Um, from that perspective, it's it's been completely unpredictable and just shocking. And I wouldn't even say in an entertaining way, because I, for one, uh, while it's spectacular to see crashes, I certainly don't wish broken bones and bad injuries on anybody, whether I like the riders or not. And lastly, the hypocr hypocrisy. The sanctions that have been given out, um, there's no rhyme or reason to them. From Sagan being kicked out for what was ultimately proven as a complete non-issue in terms of throwing the mysterious elbow, it was actually Cavendish's own break hood that caught Sagan's elbow and pulled it out, which led Sagan to then need to counterbalance himself. Um, and if you look at that event, it was actually started way back when uh, Greipel deviated from his line into Buhani, and then Buhani had to deviate, which made DeMar deviate, and just was a shit show from there. But to single out Sagan was, was complete shit. Then you've got Buhani, who in yesterday's stage actually punched a quick step rider, and he got a 200, I don't know, Swiss franc or whatever um, uh, fine, and a one-minute penalty. Like, he got fined enough money that would be like a, a dinner at a fast food joint or something ridiculous like that. And then you have Froome, um, who, um, after Aru, um, you know, I, I agree, Aru shouldn't have attacked him um, when he raised his hand, having a mechanical on stage uh, nine. But at the same time, to then maliciously and premeditatedly veer into a rue and push him, try to push him into the spectators, that should have been disqualification and ejection. So don't know what's going on, but it, but it stinks of hypocrisy. The other topic to cover today, um, Iron Man. Very recently, uh, last day or two, announced that they are moving to rolling wave starts for their championship events. Um, to me, this makes sense. I mean, I remember back when when I did triathlon, um, both a, as an amateur and even professionally, but mainly as the as an amateur, uh, the first year or two, um, everything was a, a wave start, and it didn't matter if it was your wave in your own age group because your age group was large enough to support that, or if they mixed together two or three different age groups, whatever it took to create the right size wave, but it was a constant and consistent rolling of waves to start the race and i remember thinking about it as an amateur like i wanted to win my age group and then beyond that i wanted to win the overall amateur event 
And it didn't matter to me if I was head to head with certain other racers in different uh, age groups. If they ended up beating me or I ended up beating them, there was always the contention like, well, time of day or, um, you know, did you have people to chase down or were you an early wave and therefore you were at the front of your wave and there was nobody in front of you to key off of. So it was you against you, um, which is a disadvantage in a, in a time trial event. So all of that was just part of the part of the game. Iron Man's was different back then to the early nineties because it was a much smaller event. And so all athletes starting at the same time, there was much less of, of uh, a chance for drafting and miles and miles of this draft fest occurring. But once Iron Man turned into a money-making machine and, you know, we live in a capitalistic society, I'm not judging them for that. But once they proliferated the number of races and and pulled the cap off the number of people that could be an event, they created their own shit show. They um, they created their own problem with regards to this massive drafting. And so the only um, there's there's two options: one, super limit the field, uh, which would in and of itself mitigate the drafting issue, or go to a rolling wave start. My challenge, though, with the championship events isn't this rolling wave start. It's the dilution of the quality of the field. Like within a within an age group, you might have one or two um, qualifying spots at a at a qualifying race for say Kona. Um, and if the first one or two people don't take those spots, it rolls down and rolls down until somebody takes them because they got to make their money. They meaning uh, uh, World Triathlon Corp. Or whoever owns Iron Man now, but the point is, is that diluting the quality of the event also perpetuates the problem. So to me, it should be these are going to these slots for this age group are going to roll down to the top five or top ten at most. And if nobody claims them, tough. Um, another thing they could do, which would be kind of innovative, is follow say like NCAA swimming, and there is a, a qualifying time that you must meet in order to qualify for the championship event, the NCAA championship event. If there aren't enough A qualifiers to fill the event, and they want at least three heats per event, sometimes four to five heats, sometimes more, then there's a B qualifying spot that they open up that event to, and then they take however many B qualifiers they need to fill the event. They could do a similar thing um, with 70.3 and Ironman distance events. Why not say that in order to qualify for a world championship or national championship or European championship event, you must complete a 70.3 or an Ironman distance event, not only at the top of your age group, but faster than XYZ time. Now, the question is, well, what about the easy courses versus the more challenging courses? That's fine. Look at the historical finish times and say, okay, this hard course typically has a 20% slower time than this flat course or something like that. And therefore, there's a 20% handicap on that A cut. I mean, it could work, right? So that's it for today. Um, just a couple of topics that uh, kept doing the washing machine in my head that I thought I'd get some ideas down. Uh, as always, uh, leave your comments below. Um, if you have any topics in particular that you might want me to cover, always open to it. I've got my two cents. Sometimes it's worth 1.5. Hope you enjoyed today, and as always, happy training.